Hello everyone, it's Sandra and welcome to today's video. Today is an empties and new products day. This is one of my favorite videos that I like to film and it's a series that I've been doing for a long time on my channel. I'm basically going to show you some products that I have used up and the new products that have taken their place. Hopefully I'll be able to make it through everything swiftly so that I don't have to split it up into two. Let's dive right in with some body care products. I am a very acne prone person and unfortunately that doesn't just stop at my face it extends to my body as well my shoulders my chest my back are all quite acne prone and especially in the last few years as i've gotten a lot more regular with exercising that spandex clothing plus the sweat plus being an acne prone person equals body acne bonanza so i've had to work hard in order to keep that in check the good news is that i found products that i really really love and that have helped keep things nice and clear so the first couple things that i used up are medicated body mists they are both quite similar this is the soft services clearing mist medicated breakout tonic for body and this is the versed backup plan acne control body mist very similar ingredients. This contains salicylic acid, tea tree oil, witch hazel, and this one contains salicylic acid and zinc. This has a 360 bottle in that it can spray even if you hold it upside down. It's got this mechanism that no matter which direction you hold the bottle, you can get a continuous mist. So it's particularly good if your main breakouts are on your back in any hard to reach areas because you can easily spray it all over your back. This just has a traditional nozzle, but um, I ended up liking this mist just a bit better. This particular jar lasted me longer and I like the fact that you can just buy little refills for it and you can reuse the nozzle. So I ended up just repurchasing the soft services one. I just used the spray nozzle for my old bottle and I bought the little refill. This does not have the 360 bottle you know, spray technology, but I'm pretty flexible and I'm able to kind of get an even coverage on my back. It just takes a little bit more struggle, but I'm able to get there. I really like this. This is a great product that I like to spray all over my back before I put on my workout clothes. And that way I tend to be, you know, has some preventative action there and uh, helps me not break out as much. So really enjoy this. And then as an in-shower treatment, I'm also a devoted fan of the Soft Services Clearing Clay Multi-Use Breakout Treatment. I have an empty and I repurchased it. Cannot be without this. This is another body acne product. You use this in the shower and it's like essentially like a clay cleanser. This contains sulfur. So for me, it's all about like a multi-pronged approach. I need the salicylic acid, I need the zinc, I need the sulfur, and they all work together to help keep my body clear of any breakouts. And this, you can use this a bunch of different ways. I personally just use it almost like a spot cleanser in the shower. So if I'm breaking out like on my chest or on my shoulders, I just apply this with a little bit of water, massage it in for about a minute, rinse it off, and I'm good to go. You can also use this as a little spot treatment on any spots that you have, but just like a spot treatment clay mask for body breakouts. It tells you multiple ways that you can use this on on the back. Next, I have some body moisturizers. I like to use after sun lotions in the summertime as my body moisturizer. They a lot of the times they're more lightweight and I just I enjoy the texture. So I used up a Clarins after sun refreshing gel and the Shiseido after sun intensive recovery emulsion between the two. I like the Shiseido better. I just enjoyed the milky texture a bit more. It sunk in quickly, but still left my skin feeling really silky and nourished. And I enjoyed the scent of this better. Not to say that this was bad. I just preferred this. I also used up the Soft Services Speed Soak Skin Rehydrating Gel. This was sent to me by the brand. Now with Soft Services, I buy a lot of the products and recently the brand had, has kind of noticed that and they've also offered to send me some products, which is great. Uh, this, I did not buy myself. I received this from the brand, but the other two products that I showed before this, I bought myself. And this was nice. I liked this, but I don't think I loved it enough to repurchase. It was just a great hydrating gel. Uh, very similar to the Neutrogena Hydro Boost gel lotion. So can't say that this like blew me away, but I did enjoy it. And uh, the body lotion that I'm using right now, I also received in PR from Clarins and I love this. This is the Tonic Moisturizing Balm. And normally if I hear the word balm in terms of a body care, I tend to 
steer clear of that. Like a traditional balm in a jar. I don't like heavy body butters, body balms or anything like that. I don't like anything that leaves like a greasy residue on my skin. I like stuff that sinks in quickly but r delivers moisture and hydration. And this does that. I love the tonic scent. So if you don't like the tonic scent, this might not be the product for you. The tonic scent, Clarence do it in a bunch of different products. I had the candle before. It's a very zesty citrus scent. I love it. I find it so refreshing and so comforting at the same time. And Clarins in general, like the brand heritage lies in aromatherapy essential oils. So they do these types of products really, really well. And this body balm is fantastic. It's just like a really nice body lotion. Super, super, super moisturizing, but it's not heavy, cloying, or greasy. Next, I have a fragrance empty, and this is a little bottle of Dro Malone Vanilla Anise Cologne. This is one of the few vanilla fragrances that my body chemistry can handle. I wish I was a gourmand girly, but I'm not. I like gourmand types of scents on other people, but on me, most of them smell like garbage. I think now you can only buy it on the Jo Malone website and they only sell it in the big bottles. I don't know why, but you can't get the little bottles of this anymore. I don't know if that's changed, but the last time I had checked, that was the case. I will buy a big bottle of it at one point, but um, I'm just kind of exploring other brands right now, but I really love this fragrance. It's a gorgeous, woodsy vanilla. The newest fragrance that I bought, I actually bought this uh, last week when I was in LA and I got to meet my friend Becca Sun. We've been internet friends for a while. I'm going to link her channel and her Instagram below. I talk about her all the time. She is like my makeup twin here on the internet. We tend to like a lot of the same makeup products and we just kind of bonded over time. We've been internet friends and we finally got the chance to meet in real life. We went out for coffee, then we did some shopping. We stumbled into a Byredo boutique. We had an amazing sales associate. We were the only customers in the store and the sales associate was so kind and he spent a lot of time with us. Um, we got to play with a lot of the makeup and we got to try so many different fragrances. We each bought a fragrance to kind of celebrate that we finally got to hang out and uh, this is the fragrance that I chose. It's uh, a fragrance that I had no idea about, but the sales associate, you know, I was telling him some of the, the notes and some of the fragrances that I'm into and he was like, you should try Casablanca Lily. I feel like you would really like it. I smelled it and I fell in love and I bought it. So here it is. This is one of their Night Veils fragrances, which is a bit more concentrated and they come in these little bottles and the fragrance is, you know, usually by rate of fragrances are clear, but these ones have an amber color because they tend to be more concentrated. And Casablanca Lily to me is just a really cozy, creamy, comfy, sweet floral, but it's not overwhelming. It's just really, really well blended. The main notes that stand out to me are tuberose and honey, and I love the smell of both of those things combined. I am no fragrance expert, so the main notes here are gardenia, plum, tuberose, honey, and rosewood. Rosewood is the woodsy, the woodsy uh, base. I don't really smell a lot of gardenia. I definitely smell the plum. So yeah, like plum, tuberose, and honey are, are the standout notes to my nose, and then the honey and the rose would leave the most delightful dry down on my skin and I just can't get enough of this. This is a very cool, feminine, sexy fall fragrance. Kind of reminds me of Supreme Bouquet by YSL. I think I talked about that in my favorite fall fragrance video last year. That's another one of my favorites. That one is a bit more intense. This is like the cooler, younger sister of that fragrance. But if you like YSL Supreme Bouquet, I think you would really enjoy this also. So I'm just happy that I have a beautiful new fragrance tied in with a beautiful memory. That's my favorite, my favorite type of thing to do. I love to buy fragrances when I'm traveling. From one good smelling thing to another, I have some hand soap here. Another Olay hand soap empty. This has been my go-to hand soap for the last two years, I feel like. I like to use, I like all the scents. This is a hibiscus one. I like the orange blossom. The jasmine is great. I just kind of get whatever's in stock and I, you can get this at Target. 
$3.99 on sale, $4.99 is a regular price, and it's just a great hand soap that cleans the hands really nicely, leaves a nice scent behind, and it's not overly drying. This is definitely going to be something that I will keep repurchasing, but I did want to switch it up. I wanted to kind of change the scent profile, you know, with the change of the seasons, and I bought a, um, some stuff from the brand Home Court before, and I really, really liked the smells. So I wanted to try a different scent from the brand, and I ordered a hand soap from the brand. So this is the Home Court CC Hand Wash, and the CC scent is so good. I really want to get the candle of, of this scent next, but it was sold out at the time. Such a sexy, smoky, woodsy scent. It's like smoke cedarwood, incense, cinnamon, leather. So if you like those types of notes, cardamom, there's some cardamom in there too, you will really like this. It's a gorgeous, super, super luxurious smelling hand soap. The quality of the hand soap itself is really nice. It's concentrated, you only need a small amount. It lathers beautifully. It doesn't dry out the hands, but keeps them really clean. So yeah, big fan of this hand wash and of the scent. CC. So far, I've tried the CC scent from the brand and the Steeped Rose scent from the brand, which I really love. I actually have the candle that you can see there in the background. This is the Steeped Rose candle. I have it burning right now. If you like fresh rose scents, check out the Steeped Rose. And let me just get the candle out for you so you can see it in more detail. It's really pretty. It's got this rough concrete texture, very elegant shape. The only thing is um, the the hand wash and the dish soap I had ordered from Violet Gray and the delivery was really quick. I didn't have any issues. The candle I had to order directly from the home court website and it took a long time to get the shipment in. So just a word of warning. I see on their Instagram a lot of people complain that if you order from home court directly, it can take a while. So. Just be patient. If you want any of the candles, you have to order them from the home court directly and it can take a while. But if you're interested in anything else that the brand carries, they do dish soap, they do hand lotion, hand soap, and a surface cleaner. Those you can get from Violet Gray and uh, the shipping will be a lot faster. Next, let's dive into skincare. Eye makeup remover. I used up a clay de peau eye makeup remover. I received this in PR, otherwise I would not spend clay de peau money on eye makeup remover. This was nice. Nothing bad to say about it. It was a really beautiful, efficient eye makeup remover, but I used it up and I repurchased my La Roche-Posay Respectissime eye makeup remover. This is probably my favorite one. This is the one that I repurchased the most. The price point is great and it just, it just does the job without leaving any weird residue, without irritating my eye and without making my vision cloudy. In terms of makeup remover for the rest of my face, I finally used up the Shu Yamura cleansing oil. This was a big bottle of it and I used it religiously every single day. It did an amazing job removing all my makeup. I would definitely revisit Shu Yamura cleansing oils in the future, but for now, I wanted to give my skin a break from cleansing oils and cleansing balms and I've just been using the face halo to remove my makeup. This just, this is fantastic. It comes in a little set of three. This is just one of them. It's like this microfiber disc and you just dampen it with water and like magic, it takes all the makeup off of my face. So that's what I'm using right now to remove my face makeup. I used up a bunch of gentle cleansers. The Velvet Cleansing Milk from Stradia Skin is a favorite. I really, really, really enjoy this and I would repurchase. The um, Hydroluron Cream Cleanser from Indeed Labs, I liked this too, but not as much as the Velvet Cleansing Milk. This had a little bit of a lighter texture. It just felt like a little bit more cosmetically elegant to me. And the Kiehl's Cannabis Sativa Seed Oil Herbal Cleanser, I used this. My husband also really liked this. This is a nice cream cleanser, but it did have a little bit of a lather, so it's like a gentle water-based cleanser meets a cream cleanser. It was kind of in the middle. In the meantime, I just kind of uh, went back to good old faithful CeraVe. I missed this, oddly. I hadn't used this in years, and it was on sale, and I added it to my cart. Hydrating cleanser from CeraVe, a called classic. I've been using this on and off for years, so using this right now. I'm also planning on repurchasing the Jordan Samuel Skin Matinee Cream Cleanser. That's another one of my favorite cream cleansers, but it has been out of stock because it's being reformulated and it 
just got restocked. I saw, I saw it on Instagram yesterday. So I will be repurchasing that after I use this app. Next up, I have some hydrating serum slash toners. I have the Jordan Samuel Skin Hydrate Facial Serum. I have gone through so many bottles of this over the years. It's a hydrating serum that I always go back to because it's just a great, a great basic to have in my routine. Also used up these two. This is a Caudalie Moisturizing Toner. This was really nice in the summertime if I just wanted light layers of hydration. And the La Mer Treatment Lotion. This was an essence. It was a little bit more beefy than a toner, but a little thinner than a serum. So kind of in the middle in terms of texture. I really, really liked this, especially if I used multiple layers of it. It just gave my skin the juiciest, plumpest glow. I loved it. So a great product to have like in the middle of winter where I just needed layers and layers of hydration. And the new hydrating product that I've incorporated in my routine is this Dr. Jart Ceramidin Liquid. This is a moisturizing toner. This is what the bottle looks like, but the texture is a lot thicker than I was expecting. It's almost like a serum in terms of texture. Doesn't have any fragrance in it. Um, it's a great thing to just kind of layer on underneath my serums and my moisturizer if I just want a little extra boost. For eye cream, I used up the SkinCeuticals AGE Eye Complex. This is like my third empty of this. I do love this eye cream a lot. This is a richer eye cream and usually I buy this in the winter, but one jar lasts me about a year. So I end up using it year round, but it is more suitable for me during the colder months. The eye cream that I'm using right now though is from Caudalie. I talked about it in my most recent favorites video. You know I love it. It's the Caudalie Resveratrol Lift eye cream gel. This is a lighter texture than the SkinCeuticals and it's just so hydrating and refreshing. I really, really love this. Do I like this better than this? Ah, I can't really say because they are so different. They're they're completely different textural experiences. In my dream world, I would have both. This is like a day, daytime, nighttime situation, but right now I'm using this day and night and I'm loving it. So if you're somebody that likes lightweight textures, go for the Caudalie. If you need something a bit more thick, something a bit more moisturizing, but still not greasy because I hate greasy eye creams, the SkinCeuticals might be more your speed. Congratulations if you've made it this far. Now we're on to the fun stuff, some makeup. I used up these makeup primers. These two were the little baby versions of the full size, but it was enough for me to get a true sense of the product. And it actually did take a while for me to use them up. We have the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. I noticed zero difference with this. I know some people really swear by this product, but it did not blow me away. The Makeup Forever Shine Control Primer. This was a really nice product to have on hand in the middle of summer, just on the T-zone. It did, it did the job at refining my pores and keeping my makeup fresher for longer in the T-zone. Then the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Primer. This is a really beautiful, lightweight, moisturizing primer. The primer that I'm using right now that is newer in my life was uh, this one. I talked about it in my last reviewing new makeup video and I'm really, really enjoying it. It's the Oil-Free Hydrating Primer from EXA. This is kind of like a combination of these two in that it's a hydrating primer, but it also has some oil control capabilities. It's just a really good primer if you have more oily combination skin. I know I keep saying it, but this with the Luminous Silk Foundation on top is such a beautiful combination. That's what I have on as my base today. And whenever I use this underneath Luminous Silk, it just ends up being so good and my makeup just wears beautifully all day. In terms of foundation, I used up the Pat McGrath foundation. This was in my project pan. Took me years. I really like this foundation, but I don't love it enough to run and repurchase right away. Some days I really liked it. Some days it didn't work for me. I kind of have like an on and on again, off again relationship with the Pat McGrath foundation, but I'm very, I don't regret buying it. I also used up another little cartridge of my Giorgio Armani cushion foundation. My favorite, one of my favorite foundations of all time, which is a pain, a pain in the butt to get. I'm shade 4.5 in this foundation and uh, it only really seems to be available. Like the refills of this only really seem to be available in other areas of the world. So I have a little stockpile of refills in my shade 4.5 and I usually go through one a year. So 
I haven't cracked open a new one yet, but I'm sure I will. Light to medium coverage, skin-like finish, wears beautifully on my skin. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because it's a pain in the butt to, to get. And then this, I didn't get to use up the whole thing, but I got about three quarters through and now it just smells really, really bad. Unfortunately, it went bad before I got the chance to use it up, but I did have a moment with this foundation. A while, a while ago, I really, really liked it, but over the last year especially, I just haven't really been reaching for fuller coverage bases. This was a, quite a full coverage foundation, and it was the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Longwear Foundation and Concealer. Towards the end, I was using it more as a concealer as opposed to a foundation all over the face. It just got a bit too heavy for me to wear all over my face, but I did enjoy it while I had it. Would I repurchase? No, but that's because I wouldn't repurchase any full coverage foundation anymore. I just feel like with the way that my, my taste and, and base products is evolving, I'm just, I would rather, I would rather go for lighter bases and just spot conceal as needed with a more full coverage product. I did end up buying a new foundation when I was in Nashville. I was wasting some time at a Sephora. There was a Sephora really close by to the hotel that I was staying at. I just started playing with foundations and I ended up buying a Merit foundation stick because I was restricted with liquids. I didn't want to buy like a bottle of foundation that wouldn't fit. You know, I just I had just packed a carry-on. I was sharing a carry-on with my husband. We didn't want to check a bag, so I ended up buying a stick foundation because it wouldn't count again. <laughs> count against my liquids in the little TSA, um, my little TSA approved bag. I ended up buying the Merit Minimalist Foundation Stick. Is that what it's called? The Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick in the shade Linen. And this shade is really, really good. It's like a light neutral. It's a bit light for me right now, but it matches my neck perfectly. And I feel like this would be a perfect match for me in the winter time when I've got like zero tan on. I really like it, the texture of this reminds me of the texture of the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. And actually when I was in Nashville, I wore these together a lot because I have the NARS in a slightly darker color. I have this in the shade Canel. And then with this, they balance each other out and I really like them together. So I need to play around with this some more and, and give you my final thoughts, but I don't know why I'm putting this on my face right now. It's probably a bad idea, but yeah, I like it. It's like a nice velvety, foundation stick. It's not super, super slick and emollient. I have a hard time finding foundation sticks that I actually like on my skin. A lot of them are a bit too waxy or too greasy for me, but this is not. I used up two lip products from my Project Pan, finally used up my Burberry lip gloss and my Sephora Melting Lip Click in the shade Caramel. Can't click it anymore. Loved both of these. Really good My Lips But Better types of colors. And both of these are discontinued. I have two lipsticks that I did not use up completely, but I had lipstick accidents with both of these and lost the bullets. So I'm going to mourn their loss in this video. This I'm really upset about. This was Lisa Eldridge Velvet Dragon. One of my favorite reds. Fell on the ground, covered in dog hair and, and I couldn't, I could not resuscitate the lipstick. I haven't repurchased it yet. I probably will repurchase because I really, really love this red. And then my other lipstick casualty is from Merit. This is the Merit lip lipstick in the shade Slip. And my friend Kate, she is State of Kate here on YouTube and on Instagram. She actually did a series of stories saying that this happened with a lot of her Merit lipsticks, especially the nude shades. They're not really, like the formula is so balmy that they're not really stable in, in the stick formula and this just like broke right off. She's gone, unfortunately. It would have been a gorgeous like everyday fall nude color. I do like the formula of these, but I have to say I prefer the Dior Addict lipstick formula better and the Chantecaille Lip Chics. I like those better too. Those are a bit more shiny than this but um, they're a bit more sturdy and I feel like if I can just get a similar color in one of those formulas, I'll, I'm gonna be good. So rest in peace. Those are my two lipstick casualties and that is it for this episode of empties and new products. Let me know what empties, what new products are floating your boat right now. I'm going to chat with you in the comment section below. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. This was a long one. I appreciate you sticking around for this. I hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.